There we one Christian here. And, oh, I'm a little too close there. Coming at you with a Palmer view. This is Hydrius deli beguinii, the Obi Island form. <clears throat> and um, this is, this used to be one of my favorite palms. And it still is, you know, one of my, it's not, this used to be a very hard palm to find, uh, and I was on the search for this type. It comes from <clears throat> Hydrus deli beguinii. It used to be called Siphokentia beguinii, and you might be able to search for that name, but it was uh, changed in either late 06 or early 07, so it's been about 10 years, a little more than that. And all a lot of uh, different species, uh, sorry, genera were lumped into uh, Hydrus deli, and Hydrus deli is a crown, mostly crown-shafted uh, genus that has clumping, tall, uh, dwarfish, all different types of uh, plants. They might, the next botanist that comes by may, uh, there's different, two different types of botanists. There you have your lumpers and your separators. So they'll see a plant and they'll say, well, this characteristic, it should, they should all be in one genus. And then maybe the next generation comes by and says, okay, well, you know, uh, there's, there's characteristics that, that make it so that this palm should not be or these series of palms should not be in this genus, and we're going to make, uh, it's, you know, we're going to separate them back out. And that's happened a lot, so you'll see a lot of plants, you'll see an older name for them, or a name that may be new. Um, but I try and keep up on the newest names, and I will tell you if there's an older name you may find. So, <clears throat> anyways, this palm, uh, Hydrus delibiguinii, comes from the Moluccas Islands, which is in the uh, South Pacific, and... The, this form is from Obi Island, which I believe is one of the Moluccas Islands. So it is a, uh, it's a really, actually it's a very fast growing plant. This palm is probably only three or four years old. Actually, it's not even probably three years old. It's in a five gallon pot and it'll probably be, I mean, you could plant this right in the ground. It's rooted out. It wants to go into probably a 15 gallon pot. And what makes this different than the regular uh, Beguini eye is that it uh, keeps its, a, uh, its entire leaflet versus a, uh, the regular Hydrostelli Beguinii uh, separates usually along in the in between these mid ribs here. So um, it is more of a pinnate palm. This is just entire leafed and it tends to keep that throughout its lifetime. And so that's what makes it unique. They kind of discover this growing and it's definitely a novelty for palm collectors. Uh, the downside is that it's not very wind tolerant. So if you live in a coastal area, an area that gets a lot of wind in general, maybe a valley, um, I would not recommend this palm. It is more tropical in nature, although it's said to do decently well in uh, some cold snaps. And actually, it's supposedly good as an indoor plant, though I would not know because I have not ever tried to um, grow this indoors. I would imagine it would definitely slow down the speed at which it would grow, um, but it you know, if you don't have the option to grow it outdoors, that would totally make sense. Uh, so I would, I rate this as a zone 10 a plant though. It is definitely, definitely relatively tropical. Um, probably on lines of a coconut. So what, you know, it's characteristics that make it also very, uh, appealing is that it has this nice purplish, uh, almost black tomentum that kind of lines the bases of the, uh, the petiole and the crown itself. Uh, this hasn't formed a trunk yet, but these don't get too big. They probably are going to get, probably at a full size, that that will get maybe 50% uh, thicker, and then it'll start forming a trunk. And again, that's probably going to happen within a year and a half with this plant. And uh, <clears throat> they are very susceptible to um, fungus, not to the point where they just kick the bucket suddenly, but if you don't keep up on it, to keep the entire leaf that you can see here, these insects are kind of try to tie a web here together because it is very helpful. It's, it's protective for, um, say, rain or just anything else, the elements. So uh, insects do like to get into these plants, and they will um, collect and cause uh, mechanical issues very fast. So if you get one of these, keep up on to make sure ants aren't building a, a uh, nest right here because that will cause the spear to not be able to form properly. Um, so... Um, I actually have never grown this palm from seed. I could not tell you what the seed looks like, but most hydriosteli seed looks like a, it's an o, it's ovoid. It's usually about an inch, to half an inch to an inch in length, and about half of that in width. And um, most hy, yeah, most hydriosteli seed just kind of germinates in uh, tropical uh, conditions where you have a you know decently draining soil, 
a lot of moisture, a lot of heat, just hot, humid conditions. They're going to enjoy that. Uh, don't let this dry out. It definitely has windy conditions can definitely dry this plant out although it is it is somewhat leathery and that's kind of what i where i think this the idea of it being a good indoor palm because this waxy leaf will allow it to uh, hold in moisture um, when most low humidity conditions like indoors will cause uh, transpiration of, of moisture of a lot of tropical plants so notice if you get brown tipping that may be a notice uh, a typical of low humidity um, see if you can't use an anti-transpirant I don't have one to recommend because I've never used anti-transpirant because I haven't really grown much indoors, but um, it's worth a try. Uh, these aren't too hard to get a hold of nowadays. They used to be pretty hard to, but um, now that they're so, such fast growers and they've kind of been found, um, you know, they're a five gallon this size, probably going to run you about $75 to $100, but if you want to uh, find... If you want it, you want it for cheaper. You can buy seedlings or one gallons and just grow them up your own. They're not that hard. Uh, they're just uh, still somewhat of a novelty. So uh, there's a lot of growers that are still kind of holding on to that price range. So anyway, um, that's about it. If you have any questions about hydrostella or other areas plants from the South Pacific, uh, maybe some indoor plants, you can leave them down below. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have friends that might be interested in uh, palm reviews like this uh share with your friends be happy to you know introduce this to as many people as possible and uh if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time